Okay, I want to show, I've had a lot of questions lately about how to fire up these uh, reverse flow cookers. Um, this one here is a 160 gallon cook chamber. So the firebox is only about 20 by 24 ish, something like that. So it's not as big as like a 250 gallon tank. Um, so anyway, we're gonna. It's the same principle. No matter how big your your cooker is, you just may need to adjust like how much charcoal and how much wood you're using and stuff. I prefer to use charcoal because uh, it's cheap, you know. And, and I got to buy wood where I'm at, or I got to go out and break my back to cut it. So um, I usually get a ch couple chimneys started with just any old blue bag, you know, Kingsford blue bag or whatever charcoal and. Uh, you can either set these on newspaper and light the paper, you know, and get them started that way. Now that one's going to be in the way probably. Here's another chimney I've already got ready to go. On my cooker, I use two chimneys full. I just get a burner going. That's the easiest way. And it don't take much. You just set it on there for just until you get some smoke rolling. So you start to see kind of the smoke starting to roll. Once you get a pretty good head of smoke going, just turn off your gas. And it'll take over from there. So this other chimney is still going. We're going to let them burn for just a little bit and we'll All be right, right back. All right, uh, these, this chimney here is done. Uh, this is kind of what you're looking for whenever uh, one of these chimneys is done. That's probably a little more than I would normally leave it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this. My firebox has a basket in it and I took and put a little piece of expanded metal down in there so that I can uh, keep these coals from falling through. You got to watch your hands when you do this because you get that fire come up out of there like that. You know, See how they're not all the way 100% black? So, uh, I just leave them like that. That's pretty good. So. What I would do next is wait on that other chimney, but since we're doing the video here and stuff and we're wanting to show you how, I take a couple splits, I always say fist size, you know, splits. I'll throw, on this cooker, I use uh, two of them at a time to get started with, and then that's all you need, plus that little chimney, that one more chimney to go. And uh, I'm going to leave it sit like this until that wood's 100% going. It'll, it'll be fully engulfed and we'll have some flames coming up out of there. So here in a second, I'm going to grab that other chimney. I don't think it's done yet. All right, this other chimney is about as done as I want it to be. So you can kind of get tired of waiting sometimes, you know. But then, uh, so I got two chimneys or so on there, a couple logs. It's been burning for a little bit. So here's one more log just to make it right, you know. And uh, so... We're gonna let this other wood get going real good. You can see it takes off pretty quick once you, this is oak I threw on here right now. Um, but see how the flames are starting. They're climbing about almost yay, haul, yay tall. So here in a second, I'm gonna kick this thing in there. So I just take, take that basket in there like that and leave the door about like that right there because what'll happen now is it's gonna start looking for air uh, and you'll see the flames will start rolling out right here. When those flames start rolling out right here, then we know we got a good roaring fire going to get this cooker up to Tim. So I've got both of my air inlets. I got two air inlets that are on the sides, and I got them both all the way open, and I got this door open, and my stack is open, and you can see it's already drawn out the stack. You probably can't see on the video because of the sun, but um, it's already drawn out the stack a little bit. You're gonna get some white smoke for a while, you know, until we get the fire get right, you know. You wanna make sure and do all this nonsense with this fire, you wanna make sure and do it away from the grass. Cause it'll, you're always gonna drop some charcoal or something. It's kind of hard to tell, but now we've got some flames creeping out the door. So, so at this point, our fire's going pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and, I don't know if you can see that or not. It doesn't do much. Once it does that, we're going to shut that door all the way. 
and uh, <clears throat> let her go from here. So now we got this cooker dialed in pretty good and uh, we're starting to get mostly heat and then like some thin blue smoke out the top. And uh, these thermometers are a little out of calibration but we're running about 225 on the cook chamber. So I'm going to let it run now for, it'll be running for probably 30 minutes. And then what I'll do is I'll come over and check this fire. Come here and look at this. You can actually see it's starting to go, see how our wood's starting to get white uh, around it. And you know, it's all starting to coal up on us. Now's a good time to get one more log on there and get it started. Because um, you don't want to lose a bed of coals. Here pretty quick, that'll actually break down and, and it'll start... Uh, you know, flaking off, turn into coals and such. But, but uh, so you do that about every 30 or 45 minutes. You just throw one or two of them little fist-sized splits on there, and you'll be good.